Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. It's finally here. It's Christmas in October. The Apple gods have finally blessed us with the brand new MacBook Pro. So in this video, I wanna talk about the brand new laptops and talk about the different specs and maybe give you some hints or some ideas on what you may wanna look out for when you make your purchase or what do you actually need in terms of specs. And then at the very end of the video, I'll tell you what spec I actually purchased for my own personal MacBook Pro. So without further ado, let's get it. First up, what was actually announced today? Well, we got two brand new laptops, a 14 inch MacBook Pro and a 16 inch MacBook Pro. One key thing I wanna stress about these two laptops is that they are very similar in their specs. Uh, the really only difference between the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch is the screen size, which naturally means the form factor, weight, uh, and resolution. And then the battery life. Naturally, the larger laptop, the 16 inch, has a better battery life at 21 hours of video playback versus 17 hours of video playback. So that said, Besides the screen size and form factor and the battery life, almost everything about these laptops are virtually identical. What that means is you can upgrade your CPU in the 14 inch all the way up to the maximum best CPU. Uh, you can get memory, storage, all the same stuff, uh, just in a smaller form factor. So if you want a small laptop, you can definitely go with the 14 inch and get all the little upgrades to make it a beast of a machine. For the CPU, we got two different CPUs that was also announced today. Now, if you recall last year, we had the brand new M1 Apple Silicon CPU for the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. Those are great CPUs, but it's been almost the entire year and we've iterated on that now. So we've got the M1 Pro and M1 Max, two CPUs. Both CPUs have eight power cores and two efficiency cores. The GPU part or the integrated graphics part of that, that die is what's different. You've got a 16 core GPU and a 32 core GPU. Uh, if you wanna to move to that 32 core, you have to get the M1 Max. Moving on to memory configurations, uh, the M1 Pro has 16 gig and 32 gig versions or options while the M1 Max has 32 gig and 64 gig options. Uh, what's important to note is that the CPU and GPU have a unified memory configuration. Uh, that's basically saying that both the GPU and CPU share that memory. If you recall Intel integrated graphics, you can devote some of that system memory for that integrated graphics. Well, essentially Apple Silicon CPUs and GPUs are exactly the same thing. They're integrated graphics, only they're really, really, really powerful graphics. Uh, it's gonna be using that system memory. So uh, if you get like a 32 gig version, then you can devote four, six, eight, ten, 10, however much gigabytes of uh, memory the GPU needs that's gonna be used for the GPU and that the CPU is gonna have that left over. So you gotta, gotta keep that in mind. The other thing about memory is that as you go larger in capacity, let's say 64 gigs, you may actually run into a impact in battery life. That's something I rumor I've heard. Uh, I've got a, I haven't confirmed that yet. No one has these computers in their hands, but it's something to keep in mind. So maybe 16 and 32 gig versions, you may actually get a better battery life, maybe up to like two hours, 10% battery life impact. So keep that in mind. Now, speaking of memory here, the M1 Pro and M1 Max also has a difference in memory bandwidth. Um, the Pro has up to 200 gigabytes of memory bandwidth per second, while the Max has 400 gigabytes per second. Now, to put it into perspective here, we're talking about DDR4 desktop memory, 3600 megahertz, uh, in a dual channel configuration, so mainstream computers, you can get up to about 50 gigabytes per second. Now, that, and, and the next generation DDR5 6400 megahertz memory, so that's extremely fast memory, is only up to 100 gigabytes per second. Now, why is Apple's system at 200 and 400 gigabytes per second? Well, like I said before, the memory is being shared with the GPU. So uh, now let me throw out some more numbers for you guys. An RTX 3060 
has a memory bandwidth of 360 gigabytes per second. Now, realize CPU, GPU, there, it operates a little bit differently, but uh, that's kind of why the system has a four, up to 400 gigabytes per second of memory for that G integrated graphics, right? 8370, for example, has about 450 gigabytes per second on memory bandwidth. So in terms of memory bandwidth speeds, the M1 Max is somewhere in between like a 3060 or a 3070 desktop uh, GPU for memory, for graphics. And without doing any benchmarks here, you know, pulling numbers out of the air, I would assume that the 32 gig, a 32 core version is probably gonna land performance wise somewhere between a 3060 and 3070 on, on the desktop. So it's gonna be a very powerful uh, GPU, especially in a laptop. Now, moving on from memory here, let's talk about the physical design of the laptop, both the 14 and the 16 inch, because again, connectivity wise, it's identical. So you've got three Thunderbolt 4 ports, uh, an HDMI port, an SD card port, an SDXC port, and then you also have <laughs> the headphone jack is still there. But and what's interesting is that they say that the headphone jack is uh, good for a high impedance headphone jack. Now, we don't know what the maximum impedance level is, what high impedance means, but it's, it's certainly nice to see that they're trying to upgrade these ports, right? Next, that you have the return of the MagSafe charging cable, the magnetic cable that we lost several years back. It's MagSafe 3, so in this iteration, it's good up to 140 watts of charging power. Now, this is significantly more than the previous USB-C uh, charging cable, so this is gonna be giving you, I think they said fast charge capable of 50% battery life in just 30 minutes, so that's going to be really, really fast. Um, and that 140 watts isn't gonna be an issue with uh, with, with flying, for example, because it's not the charging wattage that's the issue, it's the actual battery capacity. So that 140 watts of charging is, is, isn't gonna be the problem. Now other things, let's say the display here, we have the ProMotion display, the mini LED ProMotion display. Uh, you've got local dimming zones, so it's gonna be very, very good contrast colors. Also, it gets really, really bright. 1,000 nits sustained brightness with 1,600 nits of peak brightness, so that's, that's extremely bright. That's gonna be on the same level as the Pro Display XDR, you know, the, the what, five, $6,000, 32 inch display that Apple has. Um, and if you have like a, one of those newer iPhones, iPhone 10, 11, 12, uh, that's going to be kind of similar to that in terms of vibrance, even though it's not an OLED display. Uh, actually, uh, let me take that back. It's going to be very similar to the iPad display because that's a pro motion uh, display with the XDR local dimming zones, right? Also pro motion with variable refresh. So it's going to be able to go down in uh, refresh rate or come back up. Uh, it's going to be very smooth and it's also going to save power. So that's really, really nice. I, I think that's going to be a very big selling point for getting one of these MacBook Pros is again, CPU and the display is going to be really nice. Ah, I almost forgot the little FaceTime camera on the display has a little notch in it because Apple decided to go with thinner bezels. Uh, they still kept the camera, uh, the webcam module up top, but just kind of notched around it to increase or to decrease the bezel size. Uh, I've heard a lot of people calling this the Notchbook Pro and complain about the notch, you know, why, why do we have a notch on the laptop? But uh, I guess my personal opinion is that because the notch is in the top middle, it's gonna be where the, uh, where the taskbar is, right? And usually the taskbar there, you really don't have anything there anyway. So you have, you're kind of just eating into that. And if, even if you're watching a movie, right? You're really not gonna, not gonna notice it. Just like the iPhone, right? If you're used to using the iPhone, you probably don't even notice the notch anymore. So uh, it looks ugly on the laptop as you first see it, but then, you know, you're trading in thinner bezels for the notch. So I would definitely prefer the larger screen with the thinner bezels and I'll take the notch any day. What else with the Notchbook Pro? Well, let's talk about what do you actually need? How do you make a decision in purchasing? Um, and again, this is my two cents. Every person's gonna be 
in a different scenario, how much money you're willing to spend, what are your needs, they're gonna be different, but here's just some things to think about when you're looking to purchase one of these, right? So the first thing is to think about what do you want, a 14 inch or a 16 inch MacBook Pro? Because again, everything is very similar between the two, right? There's only about a $200 difference between the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro in a similarly spec'd out you know, computer. $200 on a over $2,000 computer, that's 10%. So really my two cents is get the size that you want um, and, and just you know fork up the $200 if you do wanna go to the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro, you know, is gonna have the better battery life, but, but again, 17 hours versus 21 hours, after 12 hours of battery life, uh, actual 12 hours of battery life, it really doesn't matter. Again, with that 50% charge in 30 minutes, you're gonna be charged up really quickly anyway. So that's kind of how to make that decision on the size. Now for the CPU, uh, my two cents here is that vast majority of you guys, even the ones you guys are watching the video and probably are super fans of Apple, uh, a M1 Pro CPU, is probably enough for your needs because you're getting the 10 cores, right? Eight cores, eight power cores, two efficient cores in the M1 Pro. It's the same as the M1 Max. The only difference between the two is the GPU. Uh, if you really do need the 32 core GPU, certainly you can go to the Max, but for, I wanna say like 80% of you guys, M1 Pro is probably enough. And in fact, I wanna say that for most of you guys, the M1 Pro is probably even overkill already because for most people, the M1 on the MacBook Air or 13 inch MacBook is probably more than sufficient. I wouldn't lose sleep over the M1 Pro versus M1 Max, uh, but some other things to think about is that if you choose to upgrade the, M the base M1 Pro, it's about $200 to go to uh, more memory bandwidth from the 200 to the 400 and eight cores. So there's kind of middle steps along the way. So the first step is that additional 200 for the 400 gigabytes per second memory and the eight cores. And then the next step is another $200 for that eight core, ad additional eight cores on top of the 24 to the 32. Um, am I making sense? So, so M1 Pro, right? $200 is kind of like a cut down M1 Max, and then another 200 is that full M1 Max. So between the Pro and the Max, you're talking about $400 difference. If you know you need that GPU, certainly go for it. But for most people who aren't gonna be, I don't wanna say playing games or aren't gonna be, no, let me take that back. For the most people who are gonna be playing very intensive games on Mac OS, or uh, you know, doing very, very heavy rendering or whatever, you probably don't need that 32 core GPU. Now the next point is how do you decide how much memory you need? Um, again, remember CPU and GPU are sharing that memory pool because you've got unified memory now um, and, and it might impact the scenario a little bit. So let's say you had um, 16 gigs of memory on your previous MacBook Pro and it was fine, but then you also had a dedicated graphics card on the on, on the 16 inch, right? And that was about, what, eight gigs of mem video memory? Um, that really is like 16 plus eight. So, so that's what, like 24 gigabytes of memory combined? 16 gigs of memory is probably enough for, again, most people who aren't gonna be doing intensive stuff. Uh, if you're gonna be browsing the web, you know, you do a little bit of light coding, uh, you know, not too intensive stuff. 16 gigs of memory is probably okay. If you say in your mind, like four gigs is for the, the, the graphics and, and, and then that leaves you what, like 12 gigs of system memory. 32 gigs is certainly gonna be a little bit more comfortable. And again, because this is, this is flexible, right? So, so it can all reallocate however much it really needs and the rest is for the CPU. So 32 gigs is, is, is gonna be very comfy. And I really don't think most people would need to go over 32 gigs. If you do, however, know you're gonna need over 32 gigs, certainly uh, there are people, but again, I wanna say like 80% of you guys probably won't need more than 32 gigs. Uh, it, you know, memory is one of those things where if you don't use the memory, it's a waste, right? But if you run up to the point where you've ran out of memory, then 
your SOL, right? So, so it's not an issue until it becomes an issue. And uh, you know, th if you buy 64 gigs of memory, it will certainly be future proof, but uh, at, I think it's what, $400 additional, something like that, $400 additional for 32 gigs from 32 to 64, it's not cheap. Uh, just keep that in mind, right? When you're making that selection. And then lastly, storage, you know, storage, get what you need. Uh, just make sure that you're taking into account whatever storage you buy now is not upgradable, right? It hasn't been upgradable on these MacBook Pros for years now. And just think how much do you need for the next three years? Most people are probably gonna be okay with one or two t terabytes. Um, going to four, two to four terabytes, that's a pretty big jump. Get what you need. Just understand that you can't actually upgrade later. So that's probably it. Really, you know, just some th final thoughts here. I hear a lot of people complaining about how expensive the 14 inch MacBook Pro is. And I, I would really say that you gotta remember 14 inch MacBook Pro is basically the same spec as the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And remember how expensive the 16 inch MacBook Pro was, right? And then you take a look at the 2019 Intel MacBook Pros and just see the big performance difference. It's insane. The battery life, the display difference, the CPU performance, the GPU performance, it, it's, it's, it's a night and day difference and then some, right? Uh, that's why the 14 inch MacBook Pro is so expensive. And they're only at only a $200 difference between the 16 and 14. Now you can see why they're, 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 they're so similarly priced, right? And, and for everyone who's saying, well, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is too expensive, there's certainly the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 13 inch MacBook Air on the M1 that is gonna be plenty fine for everyone else who's either not willing to spend that kind of money or, or is just doing normal stuff with you know, not video editing, not coding, not rendering, rendering 3D objects, right? Now, as for the actual configuration I decided to go with, I went, <laughs> I went, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because when I'm, I'm saying this, it feels kinda, kinda extreme here, but it's something that I've been keeping an eye on and I've been, you know, I've easily justified it for years now. Uh, for over a year now that now that I've, I've been waiting. I went with a M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro and I did go with the upgraded memory from up to 64 gigs. And then I went with a four terabyte SSD. Uh, 64 gigs because again of that unified memory, I have currently 32 gigs, 32 gigs is fine. Um, but I don't know how it will behave 32 gigs shared between the GPU and CPU. And I just decided to, you know, go all out on that front. And then four terabytes, because currently two terabytes, I run into storage issues uh, pretty regularly. And I have to delete, delete projects from Final Cut Pro. So four terabytes is gonna be a little bit more easy to deal with uh, without having to constantly delete projects that I'm working on. So that's gonna be nice. But yeah, no, that's that's gonna be a pretty penny. Uh, certainly, it's gonna be very interesting to see the comparisons between this current MacBook Pro and the new one, uh, or actually you guys can't even see it. So this, I'm pointing at this 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. Um, I did end up trading, going with the option of trading this in. So, so that's gonna cut down on some of the cost. Now I did order the laptop as soon as it went live, but because it has one of those custom orders, uh, CPUs or the storage size or memory, I don't know what it is, but something about it made it a two to three week lead time. So it's gonna be kicking it here in the first week of November. So if you wanna see comparisons between that laptop and this laptop, I'm gonna be doing a lot of benchmark comparisons. So if you wanna stay tuned for that, you can always subscribe and keep an eye out for that video. And if this video helped you in, in understanding the new 14 inch, 16 inch MacBook Pros, you can always hit that like button. It really helps out the channel and the YouTube algorithm, and it really doesn't cost you anything to do. Now, uh, as always, my name is Stan, and I'll see you guys in the next one.